Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Plugin Development. In the previous episodes, we learned about the core of WordPress and how to set up the theme. In this episode, we're going to learn about how to set up your Webpack and Babel and all the linting tools. Now, this is an advanced WordPress plugin development course, so I'm not going to be going in depth uh, about how things are done. So if you need the in-depth information, I've explained that uh, inside of this series, which is advanced WordPress theme development. It talks about Webpack and Babel and it explains it everything in detail. So I will basically be going ahead and setting it up. But if you'd like to know, you know, the in-depth knowledge of how things work under the hood, you can definitely go through these. This will give you a detailed explanation of each and everything. Okay. So what you can do is you can download this theme. Once you download it, like go over here and download the zip, copy the assets folder and paste it inside of your root of your plugin. Okay. Then I'll explain to you what all is included. So when you're setting the web pack, which is basically a module bundler, is going to bundle all your JavaScript file and also you know bundle your CSS, etc. Uh, and it'll allow you to do modular programming in you know, small modules, and then eventually it's going to club them together into single files. Okay. So this is your inside of your assets. You have a few things. First thing you have is the package.json. So make sure that uh, CD into the assets directory and do npm install. Okay. Or you can also do npm ci to ensure it does not update the package.json file. It'll install all of the dependencies, which are basically listed here. Okay. So it has a, a bunch of things. Uh, for example, it has got the Babel packages. Uh, it's got the SVG packages, uh, WordPress packages for your Gutenberg block development. And then you have the Babel loader, copy webpack plugin. You know, all of these, you can check out what these do. Okay, so you've got a bunch of packages available. Even for linting, you have the ESLint uh, over here. For JS linting and for style lint, you have the style lint packages available and it uses the WordPress config. So uh, this way we don't have to worry about what is the WordPress coding standard is always going to pick up, uh, you know, whatever WordPress updates in terms of the coding standards. OK, so that way we'll ensure that our code is as per WordPress coding standard, especially this is useful when you are submitting the WordPress plugin into the WordPress org directory, uh, WordPress org uh, SVN. Okay, so, uh, so that's your package.json. This is your log files. You don't need to touch that. Then you have the NV NVMRC. So this basically uh, tells you what is the node version I'm using when I'm actually um, setting up this plugin. So to so make sure that in case if you haven't already, uh, go ahead and install NVM and use NVM use. If you do that, then it's going to automatically change your node version to the one that's mentioned inside of that nvmrc file so this will ensure you won't have issues like this code works on your machine but not on mine so you will have you know uh, it'll ensure that it's installing all the packages using that node version all right so that's your nvmrc uh, then you have your babel file uh, this is basically using some presets to ensure that it supports the last two Chrome versions, Firefox, Safari, Android, and uh, IE as well. Okay, so basically the reason why you use Babel is because the modern JavaScript is not understood by all the browsers. Okay, so to ensure that when you write modern JavaScript like um, your ES6 syntax, etc., then uh, it goes and converts it into a JavaScript that most browsers can understand your code can run on other browsers as well which are not even supporting that so it'll convert that okay that's why you use the babel then you have your eslint uh, rcjson so this has all the declaration as per the wordpress recommended uh, way of wordpress coding standards You've, you're using the word ecma versions you can change that depending on you know whatever the version is going on for ecma script uh, then you have the global, you have ES6, uh, you have these rules, all of these are configuration as set up. Okay, you can change these or you can keep it the same if you want, right? 
Then you have the ESLint ignore. So this is going to ensure that it ignores the node module and build uh, when it's actually doing the linting. Uh, when it's running the linting uh, on your code, it's going to ignore these guys right here. So it's going to ignore build and it's going to ignore the node module. Okay. Um, so that's your three files explained. Then you have your style lint uh, rc.json. This is a configuration file as per the WordPress coding standard of the style lint. And these are the rules that are set up uh, that you can again modify as per your needs. Okay. Now, Coming back to your webpack config, so under the webpack config, we have certain packages uh, that have been installed already, uh, which you can find in the package.json, and they have been installed under node modules. All these packages are present. Uh, this has your mini CSS extract plugin. Again, you can check the usage of that. I've already explained that in previous videos. Uh, under that, under this playlist so you can always check that out and you can also go ahead and google it and see what all each of these do i won't be really going in depth of that okay but here it is you can check it out what this this do basically okay <clears throat> this this basically extract the css into separate files right you have the optimized CSS plugin, you have the CSS Nano, you have Clean Webpack plugin, Uglify, Copy. Copy uh, plugin is something we'll be using later, but I've just put it here for now. Then you have the dependency extract uh, Webpack plugin. Uh, so this plugin basically, if you check, so this does two things, externalize dependencies that are available as script dependencies on modern WordPress site and add an asset file for each entry point that declares an object with a list of WordPress scripts dependencies for the entry point. So at the time of registering a particular block, it requires, a, it has a certain dependencies. So rather than manually configuring it at the time of registering the block, uh, if you just import that particular package, WordPress partic particular package, then it's automatically when it's going to generate the build is going to create the assets.php. And it's going to set those as dependency like polyfill or any other so right now it's just polyfill but it'll automatically go ahead and create this asset file and then you all you have to do is just at the time of registering the block you can just use these uh, this array of dependencies so you don't have to manually go and change every time whatever dependencies your project has depending on how many blocks custom blocks you've created is automatically going to add that here when you import that particular package uh, while registering the block. Again, this will all make sense to you when we are developing the Gutenberg block, but for now, just to let you know, just the basic understanding of what this does. Again, all of these are explained over here uh, in the Gutenberg section, uh, so you can always check those out as well. I won't be going it all over again, okay? Now, uh, then you have your source directory, okay? So this is your entry, uh, and here you have JS files available. So this is your JS directory. So it's just giving you the path up until here. Then you have the image directory, which is nothing but pa the path up until here. You have the build directory. So uh, this that is the path up until here. Okay. So the entry for now, I only have one file, which is the editor.js. We will definitely do more, but for now, this is all we have. The editor.js. Uh, so the webpack takes two things. Uh, First is the entry, where you want to source your code from. And second is the path to the output, where you want to output that particular file. Okay, so we are taking the input as an entry point as this editor.js and we are outputting inside of the build directory with that name. And when you import the CSS, uh, in this case the SAS file from here, then it's going to automatically bundle that and also create a CSS folder and then include that file. So this gets bundled into editor.css. And because we are saying the name here, okay, uh, it's going to automatically go ahead and use editor.css and it's going to output that inside of the CSS directory. Okay. You have certain plugins like clean webpack plugin, mini CSS extract plugin. Copy plugin is something we'll use later. This is in case if you are going to include some external libraries and then you have the dependency extraction uh, webpack plugin which we i have already explained to you about over here okay uh, there are some rules like uh, at the time of bundling what are the folders it's supposed to include it's supposed to include the js directory which is this directory 
uh, what is supposed to exclude is supposed to exclude the node modules directory which is right here okay and then it's supposed to use the babel loader so this is to ensure that your modern javascript gets converted into a javascript that most browsers can understand secondly because webpack only understands javascript it doesn't doesn't understand css that is why we are using the css loader and sas loader the job of which is basically to convert the css into javascript that webpack can understand okay so we are using this uh, mini css extract plugin uh, loader uh, the job of which is basically to extract the css that you have imported here and convert it into you know editor.css and output it there okay then you have uh, file loader which is basically in case if you're going to bundle your images and then it's going to use all of these type of file extensions png jpeg svg all of those things and uh, it's going to go ahead and use this file loader for bundling them okay you also have these uh, fonts uh, for the file loader we also going to use the font these fonts as well so in case if you want to go ahead and include fonts in your plugin uh, let's say for the edit let's say for the back end you know you're building a plugin where you want to use a certain font uh, this is for that so you can you know go ahead and bundle your fonts as well so that webpack can understand that so you're using file loader for these font font types okay so coming back uh, so then finally you do the module dot exports you pass the entry point which is right here on top so where it's supposed to take the entry from and the next where it's supposed to output so it's supposed to output inside the builder folder okay then you have the dev tool source map again you can read about it you have the module rules you have optimization so these guys are going to optimize your your code uh, optimize css asset plugin uglify is going to uglify your code uh, basically we just want to when we output it we want to ensure that the file is as small as possible. Okay, so that's why we're using a bunch of optimization tools. Uglify the code, like remove things that are not necessary and all of those stuff. And then whatever plugins you are using, the you know, goes over here. So this entire, this plugins uh, constant, you know, that is being added over here. Okay, so tell Webpack that what plugins are supposed to be used and for what purposes. Then externals is for jQuery to make the jQuery available. And that's about it. That's all there it is to your webpack and then you have the uh sas so this is a sas directory this is where you'll write your uh sas etc so you know your scss you know sas loader sas mq node sas all of these packages are available uh that we have set up so because we have the sas loader it's going to basically allow us to all right brilliant so now what we're going to do is we're just going to delete this build folder because i, I had already built it i'm going to show you how things are going to work so if you go to package.json there are different scripts that i've written for different purposes i won't be going through all of that right now but i'll just show you the basic one right now okay which is npm run dev so if you do npm run dev what this is going to do is is going to first um, you know say that this is the development environment and then it's going to basically take the entry point from here and output it inside of the build folder if the build folder already exists it will output the files into that but if it doesn't exist it'll create one and output into that and it'll keep watching for any change so it, the moment you go ahead and make any change over here it's going to go ahead and output that so if you do npm run dev you can see that it's running that command that i get that we gave it to and it's produced it's emitted this js editor so now you can see it's build it so inside of js editor you've got editor.js you've got editor.map so the map files are also available over here and this is all your uh, ifies okay in uh, that uh, webpack has outputted right and then you've got your assets you've got your css and notice that if i go ahead and make a change over here let's say i say console hello so webpack is already watching and it's again regenerated it if you go back to the editor.js and look for hello see it's added that there right if you remove this and save it okay again webpack has run it and see that code is gone right so this is really good for development because you don't have to keep uh, going ahead and uh, rebundling it's always going to go ahead and watch okay and then you can also run that in the production mode okay uh, these are for linting purposes so you can run here npm run lint is going to lint all of the files inside of the js directory this is going to fix all of the errors whatever it can by automatically 
is for linting CSS. This is this is for pre-committing. Uh, generally, before you push the code, it expected you. It is expected that you lint your files and make sure that all the code is as per the WordPress coding standards and you know, there are no errors, etc. So it's going to run these three commands. First, it's going to run the lint CSS fix, then lint JS, and then finally run the npm run prod. So it's recommended. So it's recommended that you run npm run pre-commit and then uh, pre-commit it before you go ahead and push your code. Okay. So that's about it. I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And do star my repository to support my work. And please follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Coditech. So I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.